Um, my name is Elliot Richardson. I am the president of the Small Business Advocacy Council. We are a non we are a nonpartisan organization laser focused on formulating and advocating for policies that will support the small business community. Senator Shim, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for talking to small businesses, small business advocates, uh, the chambers of commerce that will ultimately see this. And um, what we'd like to do is give you the opening, uh, the floor to open, talk to us a little bit about yourself uh, and why you are um, the best candidate running in the primary for small businesses. Go ahead, Senator. Well, thank you, Elliot, for uh, for interviewing. You know, for setting this up. Thank you for uh, everybody that is that is watching this for uh, taking an interest in uh, the Illinois uh, Republican governor primary. My name is Paul Schimpf, and I'm running for Illinois governor because Illinois needs common sense conservative leadership that we can trust. Uh, I am not a career politician. I spent my adult life in the United States Marine Corps. I had grown up in Southern Illinois in uh, Monroe County. And then I left in 1989 to attend the United States Naval Academy. After graduating from Annapolis, I was commissioned as a second lieutenant in the United States Marine Corps. Started out off as an infantry officer, uh, served, served in that capacity for four years. And then I went to law school at SIU Carbondale, switched over to become an attorney or a judge advocate in the uh, in the Marine Corps, spent most of my time as a prosecutor. I was the head prosecutor for the Western Recruiting Region. Uh, in that capacity, any uh, drill instructor or recruiter misconduct west of the Mississippi River came across my desk. I supervised the, uh, the work of five other prosecutors. Uh, so basically, you name it, I've prosecuted it, whether it's, you know, more trivial stuff like uh, traffic citations, all the way up to uh, sexual assault, rape, uh, child sex abuse, attempted murder, drug rings, you name it, I prosecuted it. And then when I deployed to Iraq, uh, I served as the lead American attorney advisor in the trial of Saddam Hussein. I was advising and mentoring the Iraqi prosecutors. So, you know, and I'll talk about the importance of my prosecutor background later on. Uh, it does uh, it is extremely relevant with the uh, with the crime challenges that we are facing in the state. But I was I was a prosecutor in the Marine Corps. In addition to doing the prosecutor work, I also had some other opportunities in, in the Marine Corps. I was a congressional staffer for a year. I did a uh, I did a congressional fellowship. So I worked on worked on Capitol Hill for a year. I was the military legislative assistant for Congressman John Klein from Minnesota. But I also, in addition to doing his military work, I handled all of his intellectual property because I'm a, I'm a patent attorney. I handled his law enforcement. I handled his immigration issues. So I have experience on Capitol Hill. And then I also worked for, for a number of years in the office of the Secretary of Defense. I was in the strategy office. I was the DOD strategist for energy and environment. So people you know, are sometimes amazed that they're talking with somebody that worked the Saddam trial uh, overseas. Well, I've also represented the United States in international energy and environment negotiations. I was, uh, I moderated a panel discussion at the 2010 United Nations uh, climate change negotiations. So I have uh, background representing our country internationally. I also have the knowledge base to push back against uh, J.B. Pritzker and his environmental policies, uh, which really are environmental virtue signaling. But I got out of the Marine Corps in 2013 as a lieutenant colonel. I brought my family back to Illinois, which may cause some of you to question my sanity coming back to Illinois, but Illinois is home. This is the state that I love. This is the state that my wife, Lori, and I want our two boys to grow up in and hopefully have families of their own someday. So came back to my hometown, Waterloo in Monroe County. That's where I currently reside. I did get into politics by running against Lisa Madigan for Illinois Attorney General in 2014. I ran that race because I believed we needed an attorney general who was not an insider in either political party to focus on fighting corruption. Uh, came up short in that race, thought my political career was over. The way I got sucked back in by the Republicans was my state senator, Dave Luchtefeld, who really embodies what it means to be a statesman 
as opposed to a politician, uh, decided to retire and he asked me to run for the Illinois Senate. So I ran for the Illinois Senate, uh, got elected in 2016, and then served a four-year term. I am not a state senator anymore. The reason for that is I did not run for re-election in 2020 because at the time that I would have had to file the paperwork to run for re-election, I was President Trump's top choice to be a federal judge in the Southern District of Illinois. And one of my core beliefs is that we as voters deserve candidates who are committed to the offices that they are running for. And I felt like I had no business running for re-election to the Illinois Senate uh, when I was trying my darndest to become a federal judge. So I gave up the Senate seat. The, uh, the federal judge thing fell through due to, uh, due to politics. I don't wanna get into that. But that left me as a, as a free agent, and I had to decide what I wanted to do next. And I decided to run for Illinois governor because uh, I want my children to, go, to grow up in an Illinois that is safe, free, and prosperous. I do not think that that future is compatible with J.B. Pritzker remaining in the governor's office. We have to have a candidate who can unite the Republican Party, get crossover votes from Democrats, and then also survive what's going to be a $100 million character assassination coming from the Pritzker campaign. I am the candidate that can do that. I'm the only one that can. I'll be happy to talk about why that is, but that's why I'm running for governor. What we are running on, uh, my running mate is Carolyn Schofield. She is the, uh, the vice chair of the McHenry County Board. Uh, I asked her to join me on this because she has a lot of experience at the local government level. Uh, which I do not. My experience is at the national level and at the state government level. But Carolyn has a lot of experience at the local government level. And then she also has a lot of experience with government consolidation and also some groundbreaking mental health work in McHenry County. And, uh, you know, the government consolidation is something that, you know, the state of Illinois simply has to do. But then the, uh, the mental health piece of this, that's not going to be a campaign issue but mental illness is a huge uh, challenge that we are facing both on the national level and also in the state of Illinois. And Carolyn, you know, I view Carolyn as a full partner uh, and she is somebody that brings a lot of expertise to the table. So that really kind of tells you a little bit about my background and I'm happy to you know, start having the discussion and answering questions. Senator, thank you so much for that introduction. And the first question that we would have is if elected governor, what immediate measures would you take to support Illinois small and local businesses? Well, the first thing that I will do that will help uh, that will help uh, small and local businesses is we will do a thorough review of all the administrative regulations that are really choking the life out of the state of Illinois. A lot of times people ask me, you know, what are you going to be able to do as governor, even if the Democrats continue to control the Illinois General Assembly, both houses? And my response is the governor can do a tremendous amount because the governor is the head of the Illinois administrative agencies. One of the qualifications that I have that nobody else that is running for governor has is I spent the last two years of my four-year Senate term sitting on JCAR, the Joint Committee for Administrative Rules. Some of your, uh, your members that are watching this are familiar with that. That is the committee that is supposed to be providing a check and balance against the administrative agencies. And the reality is, uh, you know, I have that knowledge base. I know what it's going to take to rein in the administrative agencies. Administrative overreach is a huge problem, not only in Illinois, but also nationally. I mean, one of uh, President Trump's Supreme Court justices, Justice Gorsuch, that's his huge issue, is administrative overreach. So the first thing that I can do to help small businesses is to really do a review of the administrative rules and regulations and make some changes, really kind of get the administrative agencies back to uh, implementing the law rather than making the law themselves and having regulations that go way beyond the statute. That is a problem in Illinois. The next thing that I will do is I will be, I will insist on transparency in the legislative process. Uh, it's been business as usual under the Capitol Dome for far too long. One of the things that I will insist upon is that there will be uh, absolute transparency in legislation. There will not be any bills that are that are passed in a in a transparent, non-transparent manner. 
uh, that do not get vetoed from me. And that's something, it doesn't matter whether I agree with the bill or not. The process is important. We have to have a transparent legislative process in order to restore trust in government. And I will veto any legislation that is not passed in a transparent manner. And I guess really the third thing that will help uh, small businesses and local businesses is it's going to be a change in direction when I am the uh, when I am Illinois governor. Uh, I'm not going to continue with the uh, just increased spending in, in, and expansion of government. That has been a, uh, a bipartisan failure. That has not been a problem that is owned by one political party or another. Uh, and once we have a change in course, that's when people are going to want to stay in Illinois or want to move back to Illinois uh, because they will realize that we're not just going to keep doing the same things over and over again, which is more government and higher taxes. So those are the three ways that I will immediately help uh, small and local businesses. Thank you so much, Senator, for that answer. So one of the things that is just so concerning for small businesses is the difficulty that they are having hiring qualified employees. Uh, you know, if you walk down main streets, you talk to small businesses across the board, it is really tough to find employees and is impacting the operations of small businesses. So if you're elected governor, um, Senator, what would you do to help supplement the Illinois workforce and really uh, incentivize businesses to hire new employees? Well, this has been a problem that has really existed uh, for the past five years, at least that I've been that I've been aware of it. Because once I became a state senator and started going out and meeting with the uh, with the small businesses in my district, I was the state senator for the 58th uh, district, which is the southwestern part of Illinois. Uh, it was it was unanimous basically when I would talk to the small businesses. I would say, do you have enough people? No, we want to hire more, uh, but we can't find people. And one of the reasons that the businesses in my area were facing that struggle is because they were trying to compete with Missouri and Kentucky, states that you know were more business friendly, where people are wanting to go and they're popular, you know, people are, are leaving Illinois and going to the adjacent states. So one of the things that we have to do in Illinois is we have to change our culture, first of all, and then we also need more of an emphasis on the uh, on the trades education. I think we need to have uh, we need to incentivize uh, our best and brightest to stay in Illinois, whether it's the trades or whether they're going to school in Illinois. One of the uh, one of the things that I'm most proud of of my career in the Illinois Senate was I took the lead on the uh, the higher education working group in calendar year 2018, the spring of 2018, the Higher Education Working Group made some progress on helping our, our schools, our colleges and universities in Illinois uh, recruit and keep the best and brightest in Illinois. Because the reality is, once people leave Illinois, it's extremely unlikely that we get them to come back. So we need our, our good students to stay in Illinois. We need to keep the uh, uh, the students that want to go into the trades, we need to keep them in Illinois. And that's something that uh, that I will emphasize. It's also something I'm willing to, uh, you know, look at offering, uh, you know, some kind of tax breaks to, uh, you know, to students that are willing to come back to Illinois. We need to have, you know, this is something where we need to be realistic about the fact that we are losing our population. Uh, one of the areas where J.B. Pritzker has failed as a leader is he hasn't been up front with the people of Illinois. He has not had a candid discussion with the people of Illinois about our Illinois exodus, the loss of pop population that we've had in Illinois. That's something that has been happening. He has not been willing to address that in his past two state of the union messages or state of the state messages. And more recently, he said, well, the, the post enumeration survey from the Illinois Census Bureau so shows that we're gaining population. It says no such thing. It did not readjust our population numbers that post enumeration survey really goes more towards data accuracy than the uh you know than the bottom line population and that's another example of jb pritzker just not being straight with the people of illinois and we have to have a leader who is going to be uh honest with the people of illinois who's going to tell the truth and keep his promises you know at this point what the people of illinois are looking for 
from their governor is somebody that is going to work hard, tell the truth, keep his promises, and try to lead in a way that brings us together. Uh, that is something that I have done both as a senator, and that's the way we've been running this campaign. We've been talking about solutions that can unify the state of Illinois. Uh, we have a, a policy agenda called a new start for Illinois. Hopefully we'll have time to talk a little bit about it on this, uh, on this, uh, this meet and greet, but we are the team, Carolyn Schofield and I are the team that can unify Illinois. And that starts with unifying the Republican party first and then offering solutions and winning the general election. All right, wonderful. Well, I know we're going to give you a moment to close, Senator. So if you run, oh, you've got some more time right now. I just have a couple more questions and then we can get to that new start for Illinois and maybe integrate that into, into, um, you know, the closing. So, right. um, unless, unless it's part of, of one of my questions <laughs> and, and the next one's property taxes. So property taxes are a really big issue for small businesses and local communities. And the question that I've got is if elected governor, how would you attempt to stabilize and reduce property taxes for Illinois businesses? Well, uh, you know, that is a good lead in because our new Start for Illinois program has six policy pillars. One of those policy pillars does deal with, with property taxes. Uh, I've been involved in politics now for nine years. I started running for Illinois Attorney General back in 2013. And the entire time I've been involved in Illinois politics, People have always said, well, you know, we have a huge problem with our property taxes. Something has to be done. But you know what? In nine years, nothing has been done other than maybe nibbling around the, the edges a little bit. So what we proposed in our new start for Illinois policy agenda is a fundamental transformation to the way we handle property taxes in Illinois. What I would like to see is that once you have your property values assessed, the only way your property taxes go up is either through a referendum or a levy change, but it's something where somebody is either voting on this or there's somebody that's making a decision that's held accountable. What I don't like is property taxes that are just going up based on assessors going around and reassessing the value of your property. And I know I've talked with some property tax assessors. Uh, I know that's not a popular position, but we need to have certainty. Property taxes are a threat to the, uh, the long-term financial security of people planning their retirement. They are a threat to businesses that are trying to make plans. And what we are proposing is that uh, once your property taxes are locked in, uh, they don't change unless there is a referendum vote. They don't just go up via an assessment. I realize that that may lead to some inequity, but you know what? there's inequity in the system right now. There's already a lot of inequity that, that, that exists out there. We need to have fundamental transformation. We need to provide security so that we can reduce the threat of property taxes. And when we do that, when we make a fundamental change to property taxes in Illinois, that's gonna cause people to reconsider leaving our state because property taxes, let's face it, property taxes are one of the reasons why people are fleeing the state of Illinois. Um, you mentioned government consolidation, and I don't want to take too much time on this because we've got a couple other issues to cover, but is that part of your platform in terms of uh, stabilizing property taxes, or did you mention that, um, you know, for another reason? Well, our, uh, our new Start for Illinois policy platform has six pillars to it. Carolyn and I have a ton of ideas, okay, but we kept it down to six in the new start for Illinois because that's really six things is about all that people can get their arms around. Uh, but one of the things that we have talked about with, with government consolidation is, I would love to see some of these units of government uh, have to justify their existence uh, in the way that, uh, that judges have to survive a retention vote. I would really like to see uh, every 10 years you know, all units of government either survive a retention vote or at least have to produce some type of a study justifying their existence. Uh, government consolidation has to be a part of the solution in Illinois. We don't even know how many units of government we have in Illinois. I have heard uh, different estimates. I've heard 7,000, I've heard 8,000, I've heard almost 11,000. Nobody even knows how many units of government we have and that's really emblematic of the, uh, of the problem. Uh, a lot of times we have to be 
uh, we, you know, we can definitely consolidate some services. You know, I'm not, and I'm not saying full scale, you know, the start chopping stuff and cutting it out because, you know, if the, if the units get too big, then they are not responsive. Uh, but we really have to be looking at what units of government are duplicating services. The duplication of services, uh, that is kind of where we need to go. But uh, we do, uh, Carolyn and I do plan on addressing government consolidation. Thank you so much. So um, it, it's important for businesses and commercial corridors to bring people into the state, right? And we wanna bring businesses into the state. And I've asked this, I'm gonna ask this of every person who we speak with, you know, what's the marketing plan? If you're elected governor, how are you gonna change the narrative, um, which frankly comes from both sides at times when there's so much political fighting going on. And I know that's not specific to Illinois, but what would you do to bring businesses and people into the state? Well, one of the things that you absolutely have to do to bring businesses in, and I, you know, we had really bad news with uh, Caterpillar leaving, you know, moving their headquarters out of Chicago. We had Boeing a little, you know, a few, a few weeks back. One of the problems that we have is the issue of public safety and crime. That has to absolutely be addressed. And one of the things that I will do as governor is I will make it unequivocal that I stand with our law enforcement. Uh, that's really the key, the key thing to improving public safety in Illinois is we have to support our law enforcement community. And you're going to see me out on the streets standing side by side with law enforcement. Now I'm not going to be, not going to be cuffing and stuffing people. That's not you know, the governor's job, but the governor needs to be out there so that our law enforcement heroes know that their governor and their government have their back. The other thing that I can do as governor is I will sit down with Mayor Lightfoot, uh, State's Attorney Fox, other areas where we have unsafe conditions. I will sit down and talk about how we can make our community safer. And I have the credibility to do that. Uh, nobody else has the prosecutor record that I have in terms of prosecuting attempted murders, drug dealers, and then working the Saddam Hussein trial in Iraq. Nobody else has the credibility that I do as a prosecutor to sit down and talk with Mayor Lightfoot's uh, State's Attorney Fox. But you'll notice that I haven't said I'm going to fire them or I'm going to get rid of them because you don't solve problems by demonizing people. You absolutely do not solve that problem that way. We may have our political differences, but the bottom line is, you know, we all want the same thing. We want our kids to live a better life than we, than we have. We want to have safe families. We want to have security in our financial plan. So, you know, the one thing that I will do to change the narrative is I will be personally invested in making our communities safe. The other thing to change the narrative is just once we have a governor who is not going to continue with the same tax, you know, increased taxing policies and growing government policies, that will, uh, that will send a message that Illinois has changed course. And the reality is, Illinois has the talent, the infrastructure, and the resources to be the strongest state in our country. We are the heartbeat of America. The only thing that has been holding us back is a dysfunctional government and a hyperpartisan divider who is occupying the governor's mansion right now. So this is a question that I know you're not going to be able to answer in the two or three minutes that we've got. And then I'd like to give you two or three minutes to close, right? So, you know, we were, this is a big issue that we were asked to ask you about, and that's pensions. Um, so, you know, if you were elected governor, just broadly, how would you go about addressing the issue of pensions in the state of Illinois? Well, it is, you know, I'm, I'm glad you at least recognize that you can't, you know, have a pension discussion, a thorough one in just two minutes. You're not Correct. as bad as Marianne Ahern. Marianne Ahern in the NBC debate asked me to answer the pension question in 60 seconds, which is, you know, you're not capable of doing it. Uh, we need to understand the root cause for why we have this pension shortfall in Illinois. And the pension system is unsustainable right now. But it's going to take solutions, not sound bites. It's going to take leadership 
uh, to solve this. And it's not going to be something that we can produce a solution to you know, within two or three years. There is no silver bullet. There is no magic beans. We have dug this hole for three decades. It is going to take us at least a decade probably to get our, our system solvent. And we have to address the, uh, the drivers that have caused the, uh, the shortfall. The number one driver, and I was, you know, I'm a mechanical engineering major and a lawyer. I am not a CPA or an actuarial. Uh, so my knowledge on this is based on the discussions in the, uh, the Illinois General Assembly's pensions working group. But the two top drivers uh, of the pensions crisis are one, the state of Illinois stole from the pension funds. Uh, we did not make the pension payments that we were supposed to make. That is the number one driver of the, uh, of the pension shortfall. The second thing is the compound ca cost of living adjustment, which you know, 3% compound cost of living adjustment when you have, uh, you know, very expensive pensions already. If you say you have a pension that goes over six figures, if you've got that compound cost of living adjustment, it doubles very quickly. So one, we're going to have to, over time, try to pay back the money that we stole from the pension funds. That is possible. There have been years where we have had record revenue coming in. What have we done, though, in the state of Illinois when the record revenue has come in? Have we paid down the pension debt? No, we have increased spending across the board. So it's going to take discipline. I am also open to uh, uh, you know, capping where the cost of living, uh, the compound cost of living adjustment kicks in. You know, I, you know, I'm, I'm an attorney, you know, the three of us that you've talked to this afternoon, we're all attorneys. A compound cost of living adjustment on six figure pensions is substantively unconscionable. That is a legal term that means that a contract is so one-sided that a court will not enforce it. So I am, I am open to all of the above pension solutions. I've got an open mind on this. It's going to take leadership. But what I am opposed to is breaking the pension promises that the state of Illinois made. There is a bright line difference between some of the governor candidates. Some of the governor candidates are in favor of just completely yanking out the, uh, the pension clause from the Illinois Constitution. I am not in favor of that because the state of Illinois needs to keep its pension promises. All right. Well, we're good. You've got four minutes. We're only four minutes over after after two folks, two candidates have come on and chatted with us. So, um, you know, I guess what I'd like you to do is make your case to small and local businesses and small business advocates why they should support your candidacy for um, the Republican nomination for governor. Great, and thank you so much to everybody that has tuned in to watch this. I really appreciate the other uh, questions and the discussion that we've that we've had, Elliot. Uh, look, candidates come and go, but nothing ever seems to change in Illinois. And the reason that nothing ever seems to change is even though you know we have all these different candidates, the mega donors, the political operatives and the special interest groups stay the same. If you want things to actually change, you're going to need a governor candidate that is not beholden to any of those folks, not beholden to the mega donors, not beholden to the special interest groups, not beholden to the high powered political operatives that think they are kingmakers in Illinois. When Carolyn Schofield and I talk about a new start for Illinois, we're not just talking about our policy agenda, which is based on parents' rights, restoring trust in government, and making our communities and families safe again. We're talking about that, but we're also talking about a new kind of politics where you try to bring people together. Politics doesn't have to be the thing that brings out the worst in us. In my 24 years in the uh, military, I learned that hope is not a plan. And in my four years, as a state senator, I realized that anger is not a solution to anything. Outrage is never going to be able to unify our state. Illinois needs a governor and a lieutenant governor who are going to first listen, then learn, and finally lead in a way that brings us together. But change does not happen unless J.B. Pritzker can be defeated. Uh, and you can't beat J.B. Pritzker unless you can unify the Illinois Republican Party. 
Carolyn and I are the team that can unify the Illinois Republican Party. The billionaire-backed candidates simply cannot do that. They have burned too many bridges while they've been attacking each other. They cannot unify the party. They cannot get the uh, crossover votes uh, from Democrats by talking about solutions, and they're not going to be able to survive the $100 million character assassination that's coming from J.B. Pritzker. So if you want change in Illinois, I would ask that you give me your trust and your vote. Thank you so much for, uh, for taking the time to, uh, to listen to this discussion. And uh, thank you, you know, thank you for, uh, for, for considering me for Illinois governor. Senator, thank you so much for joining us today and good luck in the election. Thank you so much.